Hello, my name is Sonnet, and in today's video, we are going to be doing another The Good, The Bad, and The Amigurumi book review. If you're not familiar with The Good, The Bad, and The Amigurumi, in this series, I like to review Amigurumi and crochet books. I give you my opinions on what's really good about the book. I give you opinions on what I think are not so great, the bad. And in order to determine what I like and don't like about Amigurumi books, I obviously need to crochet Amigurumi from them, so I do share those projects as well. I'm really excited to talk about this book because I had these kind of expectations and ideas about this book when I first got it, and now that I've crocheted a number of these projects, I feel completely different about it. And that book, of course, is A Crochet World of Creepy Cryptids and Cryptids by Ricky Gustafson. I decided to choose this one because it's spooky time, it's Halloween time, and creepy creatures and cryptids are perfect for this time of the year. So yeah, here we are. Now, before we get into the good, the bad, and the amigurumi, let me go ahead and discuss a little bit about the physical book itself, as well as Ricky Gustafson or Crochet by Ricky. A Crochet World is published by Page Street Publishing Company and was published in 2022 by Ricky Gustafson. Now, Page Street Publishing actually does donate to nonprofits that focus on local land conservation. So I think that is pretty cool. All of this information I'm actually getting from the back of the book. It does have an about the author section in there, but it says that Ricky is from Oregon and has a degree in chemistry. She then learned to crochet while pursuing her degree. And since picking up that crochet hook, she has yet to put it down. Now, Ricky does run a crochet business on the side of her full-time job, which I find really admirable. That is a lot of work and a lot of time and dedication. In addition to running her own small business and a full-time job, she also does artist alleys at cons and things. So Ricky has a lot going on. Crocheted by Ricky also has an Instagram account where you can see photos and learn about what events Ricky has coming up. I noticed that she does crochet a lot of patterns from other designers as well. I always like to see that when I see a designer also crochet other designers patterns. I don't know, something about that just makes me really happy to see, you know, designers and wonderful artists sharing and enjoying other people's artwork as well. She's very active on Instagram, which is really nice. So if you are looking for more crocheters and pattern designers to follow over there, be sure to check out Crochet by Ricky. Now, aside from the book, Ricky does have patterns for sale on Ravelry as well as Etsy. She has this really cute happy crayons pattern that's really fun. As a parent of a young child in school, I feel like this would make a great teacher's gift. She also has a really cute forest spirit pattern. I love Totoro patterns, and so I will definitely be making one of these. Now that we learned a little bit about Ricky, let's go ahead and dive into the specifics of this physical book. A Crocheted World is available to purchase on Amazon at the time of filming this video in September of 2024. The book is currently going for $17.49. The book is also available on barnesandnoble.com. I was able to find it also on other various online booksellers and resellers. And I believe I have seen this book as well in box stores such as Michael's and Joann's. So this one is actually a very popular title that you should be able to find find fairly easily. The book is a paperback copy. It includes 167 pages of amigurumi goodness, including an index, which is always super helpful, acknowledgements, information about the designer, as well as it has a very sweet dedication page. I'm not going to read it here on the video, but just know that the dedication was very heartfelt and I really, really thought it was a sweet message. There is a beginning section that goes over the techniques of the book, such as tension, making jumbo plushies, painting eyes, so on and so forth. However, this book does not contain instructions on how to do stitches and things like that. So if you are brand new to crochet or amigurumi making and you have never crocheted ever, you are going to need an additional resource that's going to teach you uh, some of the basics. That information is not included in this book. Now there are 40 amigurumi patterns in this book, 40. That is a ton. 
And as the title suggests, they are creepy creatures and cryptids. So you're not gonna get cute little bumblebees in this one. These are gonna be a little bit more unique. These are gonna be a little bit more spooky and a little bit different than animals and cute things like that. The book is broken up into six different sections and those sections are cryptids, man eaters, creatures of the deep, forest dwellers, mischief makers, and winged beasts. There are a couple of pages as well that show uh, some of the designs and the photographs are beautiful. I really do enjoy a lot of the photographs in this book. The photography was done by Becca Blevins and they make me want to create all of these darling little creatures. Now there is a Kindle edition as well. Currently the Kindle edition is $11.99 on Amazon. From my understanding, this book is only available in English and it is written in US terminology. Let's go ahead and get into the good. These are all the things that I absolutely love about a crochet world of creepy creatures and cryptids. Okay, so first off, these patterns, they're well written and they're correct. I feel like that's a big part of a good amigurumi book. Are the patterns correct? And I made five of them and I didn't run into any errors whatsoever. Again, I did only make five of them and there are 40 of these patterns, which is a ton. So it is possible there might be some mistakes in there, but from the ones that I crocheted, everything was good. What else do I love about these amigurumi? the size. Sure, I love big lavish projects that take me weeks to make, but a lot of the time, especially if I'm prepping for craft markets and things, I don't want to spend a ton of time on one amigurumi. And these work up so quickly and they're my favorite size where it's a good medium size. <laughs> they are the perfect amigurumi size in my opinion. What else do I love about these amigurumi? They're creepy cryptids and I love weird and unique patterns. I love patterns that you don't see a lot. Now sure, there is a Cthulhu in the book and we've all seen a million Cthulhu patterns, but there's some other really unique and cool cryptids and creatures in here that I wasn't one very familiar with and that I haven't really seen a ton of Amis for. Don't see many Manticore patterns out there. And there's also a pattern for a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. Sure looks strange to me, but I love it. <laughs> Krakens, Krampus, Slenderman, werewolves, a sandworm, just so many cool, weird, unique characters that end up being absolutely adorable. So you throw cute and weird together and I'm on board. Also, one thing that I really did like about this book, and Ricky does mention it in the acknowledgments and the introduction, she did a lot of research on these cryptids and creatures. And so I think that's really cool. I think the time and devotion and obviously the love that Ricky has for cryptids and creatures is very apparent. And therefore it makes my crocheting experience more enjoyable because I know the amount of love and dedication that went into these patterns. Something else that I really like about this book is they are creepy cryptids, but it does say they're cute. And boy, oh boy, are they darling. As somebody that definitely prefers cute weird to yucky weird, I do really appreciate that these cryptids and creatures are on the cuter side. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to the good of this book and what I personally really enjoy, I found the patterns very easy. I found the patterns extremely easy. And although they appear to be detailed, they're kind of deceptive in that way. There is a lot of detail, but the detail isn't difficult and time consuming. It's all very simple and straightforward and just makes a really cool creature. At the end, I do talk about my final thoughts and I will let you know if I think this is a good book for beginners or not. But for right now, let's just say these patterns were very simple. These patterns were not complicated and I had zero difficulty following these and making up these amigurumi. So now that we've talked about the good, let's go ahead and get into the bad. Now, a bit of disclaimer, like always, when I say the bad, that's just for the title of the video, the good, the bad, and the amigurumi, a little bit more dramatic than what I like, things that I don't like as much, and the amigurumi. Doesn't roll off the tongue as well, right? <laughs> 
So when I say the bad, a couple of things. One, these are not bad patterns. They're not bad patterns at all. When I say bad, I mean, for me, personally, in my opinion, as Sonnet, these are things that I don't particularly care for about these patterns or techniques or things that I don't necessarily like to do, but it doesn't make them bad. Something that might be bad for me might be your favorite part of these patterns. So take everything I say with a grain of salt, you know you, you know how you like to create. And again, if these are some of your favorite parts of these patterns, I think that's fantastic. We can all create and have fun and love patterns in our own way. And is what makes this crochet community so awesome. The fact that we all have our own tastes and our own likes and dislikes and things we like to do and things we don't like to do. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is actually not a bad thing for me, but I did wanna bring it up just because you might not like creepy cryptids. I do feel like the theme of this book, the spooky, cute cryptid creatures thing is a very kind of niche type of topic. And not everybody that crochets amigurumi is gonna wanna create creepy, cute things. So while I personally love it and I think it's fun, I do think that this book can exclude some crocheters and that some might not even want to pick up this book because they don't care about creepy creatures. That's just not for them and that is totally valid. So if you're not into creatures of the night and man-eating monsters, then this book might not be for you. <laughs> Something that I wasn't the biggest fan of, but then loved at the same time. I know, I'm complicated. <laughs> there is some felt work that goes into these. So there are some characters that use felt things like eyes and leaves and loincloths and things. And while I love using felt and making felt creatures, I do find that some of the little felt aspects were a little annoying to do. And it's also kind of hard to place them exactly where you want. You'll see one of my creatures, the eyes are just a little bit off, just, just a little bit. I had already glued it on though, so the eyes are there to stay. <laughs> but if you don't like cutting out felt, if you don't have access to say felt, the additional felt pieces can be not so great in certain circumstances even though I typically do like using felt and other things with my amigurumi, I just placed the eyes wrong and now I'm a little mad. <laughs> so another thing that wasn't necessarily awful for me while making these, but I do know that some people really dislike it when patterns do this. And that is when you are assembling the pieces, there's not a lot of specific instruction given. So for example, if you have crocheted all of the pieces, all of your necessary instructions are there to crochet the pieces, but then the assembly instructions might say something along the lines of attach the arms to the body or attach the snout to the head, attach the horns to the top of the head. But I do know a lot of you don't like that. You want specific instructions. You wanna know exactly which row to place those horns between. Place the snout in the middle of the head, okay, but where? Please be more specific. I do understand that that is a thing for a lot of makers. And there are a ton of makers out there that do want very specific step-by-step -step instructions that tell you exactly what to do. And the assembly for these characters, they don't do that. If you are more of a perfectionist, you might struggle a bit with this. One thing I also did wanna mention is there's not a ton of progress photos. I did talk about how amazing the photos are, and they are, they're beautiful photos, but there's not a ton of progress photos. You have one or two photos of the actual crocheted piece, but there's not a lot of photos of individual pieces. So if you are a visual learner and you want to make sure the snout is looking exactly as it's intended, you're not gonna be able to see and compare because there are no progress photos. And lastly, really my only personal complaint that I have with this book, the one thing that made me just a little like, oh man, that's, I don't like that. 
Again, this is all my opinion. It mirrors my favorite thing about this book, the fact that they're very simple and fast. Because they're so simple and fast, there are quite a few designs that suffer from just being too plain and basic. Not all of them. There are some great ones that are not plain and basic. The perfect example is the kaiju. Especially with the popularity of the recent Godzilla movies, I thought this would be a really good one to make. But then when I flipped open the book to the photo of the kaiju, to me it looks just like a dinosaur. If I didn't know it was a kaiju, I wouldn't look at this pattern and say, that's Godzilla. That's an ocean dwelling kaiju. I would think it's a dinosaur, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You might be totally okay with this. And as long as you know it's a kaiju, that's all that matters. Another example was the Krampus. I was really interested in maybe making Krampus, but at the end of the day, I didn't think the pattern read Krampus enough. And another good example is the gargoyle. The gargoyle, super cute, super sweet. But if I didn't know it was a gargoyle, I would have just assumed it was just another dragon character. So I love that these characters are simple and cute and fast but some of them do suffer from the fact that they are fast and simple. So now that we discussed the bad, let's go ahead and get into my favorite part of these videos, and that is the Amigurumi. So I did make five of these characters. I originally was gonna make four, but then they were working up so fast and my husband said, I want one, and so Duh, I had to make one. And I made these all within about a week. They were super quick and I love it. Also, because it's spooky, creepy Halloween time, perfect. It was so fun. It was the perfect way to kick off the Halloween season. Mm, I loved it. I'm excited to share these with you. So the first one I made, I actually have made before. Now, I did make one of these patterns last Halloween. On Halloween night, I did crochet up this character while I was handing out candy. And that of course is one of the most iconic cryptids of all time. It's Mothman. Now I did crochet Mothman here on stream and I was able to get him done, mostly on stream. Everything besides his wings, which doesn't happen often. He was super fast, super cute. It is a lot of black yarn, so if you're not into the black yarn, you might need to skip this one. For the eyes, I did actually paint some round cabochons with some glittery Mm, gel nail polish and I think they turned out super cute super glittery oops we got some hot glue on there had to hot glue the eyes on one thing I did also want to mention these patterns do have quite a bit of sewing involved if you are not into sewing you're not gonna like these patterns as much I did use some velvet yarn for his wings that is recommended I didn't do that last time but I'm so happy I did this time I think he is so cute I kind of want to keep him again because I love Mothman. I think that cryptid is so fascinating. Hmm. I don't know. Of all the cryptids, that's the one where I'm like, absolutely. I 100% believe in that. <laughs> there he is, our little Mothman, the first of the creepy cryptids that we made. So Mothman was from that cryptids section of the book, and he's the only cryptid that I did make. The next creature I made comes from the man eater section of the book, and that is... Count Orlok. <laughs> so the book does call this Amigurumi Nosferatu, and that is the movie that Count Orlok is from, and it's very clearly designed to look like Count Orlok. I think he's so funny. I think he's so funny. I think he is so cute. I had to make this one just because of the black eyeshadow around his eyes. I don't typically use eyeshadow or things along those lines for my Amigurumi, and I just felt like doing it this time. So Count Orlok it was. Also, I heard that there is a new Nosferatu movie coming out, so the perfect addition to our little Halloween spread that we will have going on. He was super fast. Next to Mothman, probably the quickest of the Amis that I made. So cute. I did forget to mention this, but most of these are made with cotton yarn, the I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby, as well as a three millimeter hook. And yeah, there he is, Count Orlock. Not much more to say, really fun, really easy. I had a good time with this pattern and he's perfect for my upcoming craft market. 
we're going to continue on with the man eaters. Now, this one I originally wasn't going to make, but I decided to because my husband asked me to. And as I said, when my husband asks me to make him something, it might take me a year to do it like his extra sock, but I'm going to make it for him. And that is the Minotaur. So the Minotaur is from Greek mythology and he's just really funny. Isn't he just so cute? I see why my husband wanted this one. He's just, he's really fun. And I'm a sucker for a good nose ring. What can I say? Now on screen, you can definitely tell, but in person it's not as bad. But do you see what happened while making this pattern? Do you see it? You can, I know you can. <laughs> yeah, I ran out of yarn. So I ran out of yarn, but I didn't run out of yarn. And let me explain. <laughs> he is made using, I love this cotton, but as I was crocheting up his head, I started realizing that I didn't have as much of this brown color that I was using as I originally thought. This color is a discontinued color, so yikes, what am I going to do? So I knew I was gonna have to use two different yarns, but I really didn't have another brown that kind of matched this. So I ended up kind of crocheting him out of order and just really prioritized which pieces I thought were going to be most important to make sure they were the same color. So that was his snout and his ears and I thought his arms. So I decided to do his lower part of his legs a different color and then I would switch to the brown and it would just be fine. And then hopefully I would have enough for everything. Well, this is how much of that brown I had left over. And now looking at it, I probably had enough yarn to make his legs. <laughs> But the way these are crocheted, you start with one leg, then you crochet the second one and you connect them together, and then you crochet the rest of the body. And by the time I got up to here and I realized how much yarn I had left over, I wasn't about to do it all over again. No, I wasn't gonna do that. And plus this is for my husband. He's not gonna care that he has two different color legs. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think I did have enough yarn to do his legs and I was just a little too anxious about it and a little too proactive about it? uh <laughs> you know changing out the yarn color but yeah that's really the only thing about this minotaur his legs are different colors but it's fine he's he's a creature listen not everything needs to be symmetrical not everything needs to be the same it's fine i like him and i know my husband loves him and so i'm happy i was able to make this one for him so moving on to a different section we are moving to the forest dwellers section of the book. And I did make one forest dweller and that is Leshy. Now Leshy is a forest spirit from Slavic mythology and Leshy's the protector of the forest at the forest animals and things along those lines. This was one that I was just constantly drawn to and I think it's because of just the shape of the head as well as his horns. And I really do like this Ami but this is the one where I was talking about earlier where I just placed one eye just a little bit too high and it's just a little bit off. I wasn't really paying attention. I glued it on and then I realized how kind of uneven it is. It's not terribly noticeable and I think I will still have him for sale, but it's noticeable enough to where when I look at it, it's just like, mm, not the best, but I still do love him. And then we have the leaves and things, which wasn't that big of a deal. I did enjoy putting the little felt leaves on him. Again, I like doing felt and other things with my Amigurumi, but it does leave more room for error. So it is what it is. I still think Leshy's super cool. He was also pretty quick to crochet up. I thought it was going to take longer than it did. I wanna learn more about the Leshy mythology because that seems like a really cool creature. Which leads me to the last Amigurumi and my favorite that I made from this book. She needs no introduction, none. This is from the Mischief Maker section and that is Medusa. I have a couple of other Medusa patterns that I want to make, but those are a lot more detailed, like holy smokes, are those patterns detailed? This Medusa, not so much, but she is still incredible. Now she did take me the longest to crochet up, but surprisingly, not awful. Her body is fairly simple. It's just this snake type of 
shape. But then of course, the thing that takes the longest is she does have these nine snakes. And you crochet up each individual snake and then you have to sew on each individual snake. It wasn't too time consuming, but she is still incredible. I absolutely love her and very recognizable. You know instantly who this creature is. And she is a very powerful and very important symbol in mythology. And I know she means a lot to a lot of people. So I was very, very happy to crochet up Medusa. With the end of the Amigurumi, that brings me to my final thoughts. What do I think of a crochet world of creepy creatures and cryptids? You guys, this is one of those books that was on my shelf last year and I would see it and I'd say, yeah, cool. You know, cute cryptids, neat. Crochet them around Halloween time. It never really inspired me really to create, but after the past week of making up these characters, I love this book. The patterns are easy, the patterns are quick, the patterns are detailed enough, and they are unique enough to the point where I'm like, yes, this is what I want in an Amigurumi pattern. They're cute and sweet, and I just, I love so much about this book. I will be crocheting more out of this for the Halloween season. I will be crocheting this all throughout the year. And you can tell reading through this book that Crocheted by Ricky really loves to crochet. I do recommend this book for advanced beginners who wanna create cute, creepy creatures and cryptids. Although you're not gonna learn how to crochet from this book, once you have the basic techniques down, once you can make a magic ring, crochet in around, do some color changes, and attach pieces together, you can make a lot of these patterns. Would I buy this as the very first book for somebody looking to get into crochet? No, you're not gonna learn how to do the stitches and there's not a lot of instruction on how to sew the things together, which might be hard for absolute beginners. But if you've made a handful of amigurumi and you're starting to feel very comfortable with it, definitely pick this one up, especially around the spooky time. It is so fun. I went from just being very meh on that book to it being one of the, my top favorite Amigurumi books. I really do personally love it. And I feel like if you are similar in how I like to crochet, you definitely will enjoy it too. But that's it. That's all I have to say about a crochet world of creepy creatures and cryptids. Please let me know down in the comments. Do you have this book? And what is your favorite project from it? Is this a book that you're interested in? Or also let me know if it is a book that you will be passing on because it's not for you. Again, we're all welcome here in this crafty creative corner, regardless on if this book is for you or not. I still appreciate you and I still want to know your opinion. We did hit 2000 subscribers. So thank you everyone who has been subscribing. If you haven't yet and you want to join our cozy little tiny community of crocheters that like kind of some weird things, be sure to subscribe as well as hit the thumbs up button. And just know that I appreciate every single one of you. I think you are completely valid and I hope that you have a wonderful and creative day and you're able to crochet something today. I love you so much. You are so wonderful and I will see you all a little later. Bye.